How did the universe begin? How did suns and planets and galaxies form? What will happen to our solar system? Are there other habitable planets like our own, out there? One of the leaders in answering these questions has been Sandra Faber. Her stellar intuition set the stage for the explosion of knowledge in modern cosmology from the 1980s to today. We've been on this planet as an intelligent species for a blink of an eye, and yet see where we've come. Thanks to Sandra Faber, our knowledge of the universe has come very far. She always loved observing the world around her. When I was five, I would go out on the front lawn and look up at the stars. I had a pair of binoculars and I would look at the night sky. Wonderful, warm summer nights, just lying on the grass and looking up at the sky. By the time she went off to college, astronomy had her hooked. I walked into the telescope dome at, at Swarthmore. I looked up at the telescope and it was love at first sight. That love led her to study astrophysics as a grad student at Harvard, where her focus turned to the birth and evolution of galaxies. We don't know where they come from, what made them. We're starting from ground zero. What do you do in a situation like that? What you do is look for regularities. And it wasn't long before Faber found a major one. After graduate school, she got a position at the famous Lick Observatory at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Within a few years, she discovered that the bigger the galaxy, the faster the stars orbit around its center. The Faber-Jackson relation, named after uh, an early paper that she wrote with one of her first students, uh, is referred to constantly and is one of the fundamental building blocks of our understanding of how galaxies work. Meanwhile, Faber was invited to co-write a review of galaxy masses. Every time astronomers tried to measure the mass of something, like a galaxy or a group of galaxies, they would always come out with a number that was roughly 10 times off. Astronomers came to call this missing matter. Bad name, it was actually missing light. There was plenty of matter there, but we just couldn't see it. The review helped convince the astronomy community that galaxies are surrounded by massive invisible halos called dark matter. Still, Faber wanted to do more. She dreamed of using a telescope as a kind of time machine. If we can look very far back in time, we can get snapshots of the universe in slices coming forward, and we can see the galaxies evolving from one kind of galaxy to the next, like a cosmic movie. She set out to build bigger and better instruments, developing the first camera for the Hubble Space Telescope and the largest telescope on Earth, the Keck on Mauna Kea Mountain in Hawaii. In 1984, exciting developments in particle physics converged with Faber's studies of dark matter. With her colleagues George Blumenthal and Joel Premack, Faber was able to write a comprehensive theory for how galaxies evolved from the Big Bang to today, the first ever in the history of astronomy. But Faber didn't rest on her laurels. We knew in the 1980s that galaxies, many galaxies, probably had black holes at their centers, but very few observations existed. When Hubble went up in the 90s with its high-powered camera, she used the images to look for proof. Black holes are the brightest things in the universe as gas falls in, and it was another aha moment. Every big galaxy has a black hole at its center. Her quest to understand the life cycle of galaxies was far from over. In 2002, Faber and her team completed the world's largest spectrograph for the Keck telescope. The device took her eight years to build. Sandy Faber basically built the instrument that I think most people would today consider to be the best in the world. And the purpose of this instrument is really to gather the very, very faint, distant light of galaxies. And today, she's working on a new spectrograph, 10 times as powerful. We're just now to the point of completing our first survey. 
which is accumulated data on 50,000 galaxies, looking 10 billion years back in time. When history is written about astronomy in the 21st century, I think Sandy will undoubtedly become one of the you know, giants of our, uh, of our field. I think of Sandy as being somebody who's uh, almost a force of nature. Uh, she's simply unstoppable. What astronomy tells us is that the future is bright ahead. We have acres and acres, oceans of time, but instead of planning for 50 years, we have to plan for a billion years. The 2009 Bauer Award and Prize for Achievement in Science is presented to Sandra Faber for extraordinary advances in our knowledge of the properties of distant galaxies, dark matter, large-scale structures of the universe, and of black holes in galactic nuclei and for innovative leadership in the development of astronomical facilities.